to another edition of the BA Sales Kennel Cup Holistic Healing Hour, and thank you one and all for doing so. Some of you are via invite, and some of you are ubiquitous. However you got here, continue to do so, and thank you for doing so. We're growing exponentially with your help, and most assuredly with the help of my guest, much like Jeff, and he's going to help me on the last name. Y'all guys all know how I put your last name. I believe it's Seckendorf, but he'll- Yep, he'll, exactly. He'll, Look at that. We probably should end the show right there, folks, but but we won't. But we won't. So quickly, I do want to repeat his bio. Some of you may have indeed heard this in the Prelude show. And quickly, not to minimize his credentials, but he's got something that he's kind of going to tell us all about that's going to be new, at least to me, and I'm sure all of us. I can't wait. Jeff Seckendorf, UTD Scuba Coaching, a new training paradigm. And bear with me for a second. I'm literally scrolling down the Podmatch Arena pages, or page, and I want to make sure I tell you the guest tags that will be encompassing today. Training, scuba, diving sports, performance coach, education, cyclist, coach, anti-aging, and fitness. Jeff already has an open invite to come back if we don't encompass those today. We can pick those up at another time. Continuing down the page is biography, verbatim. Jeff learned to dive in 1990 in preparation for assisting with a series of underwater filmmaking workshops in the Caribbean, or Caribbean, your choice. He went on to dive extensively in the warm waters around the Virgin Islands in the very, in brackets, cold waters, very cold waters of upstate New York lakes. In 2008, after a long career in the film industry, which we just chatted about a little bit in the green room, Jeff co-founded Unified Team Diving, a global scuba training and certification agency and scuba equipment manufacturer. In 2020, Jeff purchased UTD, renamed it UTD Scuba Diving LLC, and separated the company from the UTD equipment. <clears throat> Pardon me. Jeff now owns and operates UTD Scuba Diving, which is solely focused on training and certification. Jeff has traveled the world as a diver, Egypt, Spain, Italy, France, Mexico, Dubai, the Caribbean, Caribbean, and domestically in all four corners of the United States, to include good old Maine. We'll get to that in a second. He's been in the caves in Mexico, Florida, and Europe, is trained on the MX Dash series of rebreathers, and is a UTD instructor trainer. Jeff has been coaching, mentoring, and teaching adults all his life. He spent two decades as a master faculty at the main media workshops and at the Rockport College in eight years as the owner of one-on-one -on -one film training, a mentoring backslash consulting company, training emerging film directors. Jeff is a certificated, cert, let me say it again, certificated flight instructor and spent many years teaching and competing in competition aerobatics. He currently races a bicycle on I chuckle because I wonder what he does in his spare time and track at the national level. And what we are trying to do, I'll call to action your audience, his audience, our audiences, new, otherwise, please, one and all, go to utdscubadiving.com backslash utd hyphen scuba hyphen coaching backslash. When you do so and get there to do so, you can learn more about the UTD Scuba Coaching Program, and you can contact him accordingly through his webpage. And I'm going to let Jeff come in and tell us more about himself and the new, new information that I'm excited to. Jeff, thank you so much for being here today. And please do fill us in and take it away. I can't wait. What's Jeff yeah, going to tell no, us about good. today? Welcome. Great thank to you. be here. The, uh, yeah, the main connection is awesome. So I spent 25 years in Rockport Love it. in this teaching, uh, you know, each summer up there at the first, it was the main photographic workshops, and then it was the main film and television workshops, and then it was uh, the main media workshop. So I have a big, big place in my heart for uh, you have a big main, place in ours. It's fond, yeah. it's fond memories. It's fond memories. Yeah. But continue, so, continue. And uh, yeah, so um, I had a long career in the film industry, as you said. Retired from that around 2008, formed a scuba certification and training agency, had a little more time to uh, be on the bike and uh, start racing, did triathlons for a long time, and uh, eventually got to where uh, I found the, the track on a bicycle. 
uh, so we have, uh, there are three velodromes within shooting distance of my house. So um, we have San Diego, Los Angeles, the Olympic velodrome in Austin, Los Angeles. And then we have one in Encino up in north of LA. So I have a lot of opportunities to ride the track. And I've been doing that now for about 10 years. And I love the track. I love the meditative aspects of riding around in a circle, six o'clock in the morning, nobody's there, no cars, you know, a bicycle with no brakes, one gear. It's, it's kind of the purest form of cycling. And, Jeff, and I'm, sorry, purity, real, yeah. I, I'm so sorry, real quickly. I was like s s being very naive to the tracks myself. Are they angled and s s yeah. slow? Okay, continue, yeah. continue. Yeah, continue. yeah. So yep. the Olympic track in Los Angeles has a 45 degree bank. I got to get my you. hand in the camera here. 45 yeah. degree bank in the turns. So it's a, you have to be moving to not Yo, fall you off do. it. <laughs> you yeah. do. Um, but it's a wonderful experience of speed to be on the track. And I, I just love that so much. So um, along the way, I set the age group hour record at the San Diego Velodrome. How far can you ride your bike in one hour? And um, I've twice now set the course record at the World Six Hour Time Trial Championships uh, in my age group riding on a fixed gear bicycle. So, so um, the bike is a big part of my life. Scoob is a big part of my life, and uh, and the the two of them have come together in a very unique <coughs> coach coaching program okay. that we started in Scuba. So. Uh, yeah, we can talk more about that or wherever you'd like please, to go next. Please, no, please, please. I think I, I would have been a little self-serving <laughs> audience, but that's okay. It's my show. I'm, te I'm teasing a little bit. Please, <laughs> please do. Please do tell us about that. Please. Yeah. So um, the more I spent time on a bike and the more I spent time as a coached master's athlete and, uh, you know, the older we get, so I'm 68 now, the older we get, the you're a kid the, i'm 69 yeah. you're, you're yeah, a there kid. you go <laughs> uh, i think the older we get the more important it is to be guided through sports i think that injury prevention is huge um overtraining is a is an issue we're careful of all this other stuff that comes with being a master's athlete where you know i pretend that i'm still 35 and i can train like that but i also yeah. have you know a little realistic thing so so all of the time I've spent being coached as an athlete has been, has done two things for me on the bicycle. One is it's made me faster, of course, because I have a structured training program. But the interesting thing, as much as making me faster on the bike, it also makes me a better cyclist. So coaching, being coached makes me a better cyclist. So when I took over UTD in 2018, bought it out, got a new training director. And I had this vision that we could change the way people learn scuba diving and completely go out of the box. And so, you know, normally in scuba, in scuba diving, you know, you walk into a dive shop and you say, hey, I want to learn to dive. And they say, okay, great. And they give you a weekend course or a two weekend course. And, and, you know, a hundred bucks later and, you know, whatever hours, They've taught you to use the scuba equipment. They've given you a certification card. You're kicked out. And, you know, sometimes people continue to dive and sometimes they don't. But the scuba industry has a problem with retention. It's the biggest issue facing scuba and I'm sure other similar recreations um, that take some training that people learn to dive and don't continue. So we started to look at, so, so UTD is a, is a scuba certification agency of which there are about maybe 20 in the US and maybe another 20 or 30 in Europe. So, and you've, you've, your audience has probably heard of some of the bigger ones, PADI and NAWI and TDI right. and SDI. And SSI. there's a whole alphabet soup of these things. Yeah, there, is. there is. So what I realized was because coaching makes me a better cyclist, there's no reason that coaching can't make divers better divers. So we took a traditional training model, and this could actually work in any industry. I just happened to do it in scuba because I own that company. We took a, a traditional endurance athletic training model right. and just picked it up, moved it four inches to the right, and plopped it on top of scuba diving. So when people come into the training program, 
not for everybody, but when some people come into the UTD training program at, as a coached scuba diver, we've completely flipped the way people train. Okay. So every morning I wake up, I've got a calendar that calendar has my bicycle workouts on it. I literally got back about 10 minutes ago, which is why no I showed it. up on this call no, right no on kidding. time. Cause yeah. I was out doing a, a two hour structured <laughs> training ride. That ride is on my calendar. It shows me exactly, you know, what to do, how to do it, what power numbers it's got notes from my coach. It's got a place for me to send notes back to the coach. Wow! I thought this would be brilliant for scuba diving. Yeah. So we did a little semantic change. We took the instructors who wanted to do this inside of UTD and we said, okay, you're going to be called a coach. And we took the students who come in to the program this way and we started calling them clients, not students, just like in the endurance athletic coaching model. We opened up a piece of software for them, which has a calendar and a workout, workout, I'm in air quotes now, workout library and a communications system so you can you can talk back and forth with your coach and each of these coaching clients gets a weekly calendar that the coach mm -hmm. sets up individually for them and i love the model you know i love the model because it slows training down from two weekends four days to maybe four months or we've had people in for years in this program just week after week their coach just puts stuff on their calendar, you know, academic stuff, exercises, diving things, sports and fitness, if they want, it's all completely customized and so on. Now, Jeff, so, would, again, my naivety to that degree, as your, as your new, new people, if you will, are entering the door, whether it's virtually or whatever, is, is that a real eye opener? You guys are definitely the innovators of that with my naivety, right? Is there anything like that per se out there as we no. speak? To that no. degree, to that degree, no way, right? Nothing. No. And, you know, it's funny because I, we sit around chatting about this and it's like, please, somebody rip us off. I just want someone to steal this idea. Yep. That's got a bigger company than me. And it's the I only way it's going to grow because we are you. absolutely that's pushing it, and, pushing and how, an elephant uphill. How's that uphill. old saying go? I forget a flattery when they do something. Flattery is, you know, that one. And yeah, anyway, yeah. They steal it, Copying they're is a, it's yeah, right, right, right. That one, that one. But from but, a business side, from a business side, that's brilliant. Yeah, and most people that's are brilliant. very protective about their ideas and they don't want any part of it. But you know, we're a small company, and for us to push this thing out to the world is it's we're the doing only way. It. You do have to count on big brother to some degree in that regard but continue you know we're continue. not trying to be big i mean that's right, the other right, thing you right, know right. we're we're but a small a boutique little push company of exposure, a little push of exposure yeah. so yeah. i'm hoping that some other agency decides that this is the the greatest thing they've ever heard of and and goes well, on i think to, they might work on in it. my humble in my humble opinion i i think they might <laughs> no, i hope so <laughs> yeah yeah so anyway so that program has been going really really well so you know to to get a little side trip here yeah please um I'm doing all this work on the bike and I've decided that I want to try to set a U.S. or maybe an international hour record when I'm 70. So that's okay. going to be in about a year and a half. I'm sorry, Jeff, what would that record be? As it, if you know, right offhand by who I do Mabel? know, I do know exactly, but it's a shade under 44 kilometers in an hour, okay. which Thank is about 20, you. about 27 Thank miles. You. Thank you. And, um, and it's hard. So the hour record, oh, it's probably the hardest thing you can do in cycling. It's not a sprint because you can't go all out, but it's also not an endurance ride. It's a right, hard, right. hard, hard, hard effort. Bet. I'll bet. And so, and it's iconic in cycling. It's been going on since the 1800s. How far can you ride your bike in an hour? And, you know, there's wow. a very, there's a culture around it, right? It's done on a track. It's done on a track bike. It's, there's a lot of science behind it and aerodynamics and structured training. Is that and, a whole yeah. different, again, my, my naivety, is that a whole different gear ratio of a special bicycle to do that or not necessarily? Um, it's the bicycle I race time trials on, on the track. Got it. Right. So I'm a pursuiter on the track. So Got it's it. that same bike. Got it. Um, and, you know, of course, when you race on the track and you only have one gear, choosing that gear is the right. thing you spend right. the most time thinking I'll about. Bet. Right. I used to think it was simpler because there's one gear, but 
No, it's not. It's I'm trying 20, to envision that 20, as a novice. I'll bet, 20 I'll times bet more it, complicated. I'll bet it is. What the yeah. hell? Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to miss. Yeah, continue. So I, so I started the idea of doing this hour record. And I started training for it. And then I started to look at why I was doing it. And this, now I'm compressing about two years into about two Correct. minutes. But, you know, there's a saying that mountain climbers have, right? You know, why would you go climb a mountain? And often the answer is just because it's there. Because it's there, exactly. And it's that seems, you know, I started that way on the hour record attempt. Even the one I did in San Diego where I was successful just because the hour record is there to me after I did it once didn't seem like enough of a good idea to be worth what's going to end up being five years of really, really hard work, physical, oh, mental, no nutritionally, doubt. all that. No doubt. So we started looking at why I started looking at why I'm doing this and, and what is the purpose of this room, this bike ride? You know, and then I bumped into a friend of mine who's a gerontologist, wow. interestingly, works with aging populations. And we got talking about all these different things we're working on. I was telling him about the bike ride. And he said, you know, I've got this idea and I've got the, I've got this name I really like. And I don't know what to do with it. And he, he just dropped this on me. He said, oh. And like, what's the name? Come on, give. And he's like, well, Institute of Purpose. Love it. And I just thought. I love that. Oh, my God. That's yeah. like the best name I've ever heard. That's really pretty, it's pretty much right up there. Yeah, continue. It's pretty good, right? Yeah. I mean, usually you name the band last. Right. Right. Exactly. You know, exactly. First you what find the drummer. <laughs> exactly. Go exactly. find the drummer. And then after you find the drummer. Yeah, yeah, let's get then, the gig going. And how yeah. about the orange butter knife or, what, or exactly. whatever. Exactly. So whatever. go name the band. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> we ended up deciding we were going to do something with the Institute of Purpose. Right. And I love the uh, name. <laughs> I love the name more than everything. <laughs> so it took us all. I mean, we've been talking about this for probably a year and a half. Right. I made a simple website. And started a company and which we had no idea what it was. Right. All we had was we just named the band. We didn't know if we were playing jazz. The hits will come later. The hits will come later. <laughs> <laughs> is it jazz? Is it reggae? Is it yeah, techno? Right. <laughs> is it folk? Yeah. Whatever but, is the band, but we had right. the name. Sometimes so. that is the best way. It really is. It really is. It's about, let's just know. throw this thing on the wall and see what happens, if you will. Spaghetti a little bit. Yeah, I'm not so sure on this. <laughs> yeah, well, in this so, some days it is like, yeah, but continue. But I, I know where you're coming from. Continue. Yeah. Continue. So we, we had it. So then now we have a company and a website and no oh. idea. With yeah, a great well, name. There you go. You got two out of three <laughs> out of the way. So. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> That's progress. That's progress. So we started all sorts of different ideas. You know, was it going to be um, an advertising platform for people? Was it going to be, you know, we knew it had something to do with content, but we weren't sure what. Right. But anyway, we came down to the idea that it is a content project to give people a platform and a forum to talk about purpose. And purpose is really interesting when you lose it. Purpose is easy when you have it, but it's trickier when you lose it. Now, people lose purpose for all sorts of reasons. Well, sure. Jobs go away. Um, you know, one thing we see is um, a spouse gets sick and all of a sudden, you know, people are quitting their jobs, becoming caretakers, purpose changes, doesn't go away. It just shifts. And that shifts shift can be uncomfortable. We also see people in their forties getting out of the military there you go. after 20 years. I can right? see that. So now you're yeah. 42 years old and you know, what's your purpose? So we started collecting up content just asking people what is their purpose and that's what the website turned into did, did you do that like a public survey or i mean how did you get that proverbial no i just there? started asking my friends there you go there you go you know, do you yep. want to be on camera and tell me what your purpose is love it and so we have i don't know 
that's not that much yet. We're working on it. Maybe 20 little short 30 Listen. second videos. But then the cool stories, we've expanded into longer co form content. Okay. So three to 10 minute videos about, a, you know, more involved in some of these stories. And some of these stories are fascinating. I'll bet. Just I'll bet. fascinating. So the Institute of Purpose is a, you know, it's basically a content company. There's a little speakers bureau element to it. There's a little tiny advertising element to it still. But really what we're collecting is content on purpose. And what we're offering is content on purpose. And I think the most interesting thing on the whole project was if you listen to these short 30 second videos, Good. they're all the same. It's so fascinating. They're all the same. They are all just different ways of saying my purpose is to help people. That's the core. I mean, that's the core. Of that's it. Yep. So when I went back and started looking for the bike ride at the bike ride, it was like, well, how in the world is this bike ride going to help anybody? Right. And then I realized I can help people through the Institute of Purpose showing anybody who wants to try something difficult that they're not alone. You're, you're obviously the living case in point while you're living your purpose to show them about the purpose of how to do the price. It's awesome. Exactly. Yeah. It's awesome. So that's what we're working on. So it's a, you know, it's a passion project. It's not an income generator. I have other versions. I have other sources for that. So I don't have to worry about it, but that's always we good. do, that's always yeah, good. we do um, continue to collect content and add bits and pieces to it and do speaking engagements. And um, yeah, I'm super high on this one. So it's the Institute of Purpose. Uh, speaking in engagements like booked as we speak that we might want to let people know about or are you um, going to be in such and such an area or what have you? There, there are, but there, there are, Right now, the the ones I have on the books are private. Got it. Got it. Got it. So, got it. Got it. Um, got it. But I'm more interested in a virtual audience. Okay. So how does how do people reach out? Let's segue into that a little bit. How how do how do people get a hold of you and get that ball rolling, if you will? Yeah, no, there's a contact form on the Institute of Purpose dot org, and you know, I encourage everybody take a look at the website. Look at the little videos. If you want to participate, if you have something to say that you think is appropriate for a broader audience about what is your purpose or what happened when your purpose changed or how did you avoid having to make a change of purpose or how did you have to make a change but then found a way to, to make it work. These are the stories that I'm really, really interested in and would love to hear from people. And then we can just even as simply as doing a little zoom recording, we're happy to do like, you know, these awesome. short 30 and 40 second clips. And we'll probably see if we can do one with you, Bill, um, on, on what, uh, what pushes your buttons in terms of purpose. It's just fascinating. That interaction is so great because refresh my memory. You just told me in the green room, <clears throat> pardon me in and of itself. It's a new baby, like six months. Is that what you said? As we, yeah, speak? it's been, uh, it's been, well, <laughs> It's been about a year and a half, but it's only had a clear vision for about got it. six got months. It. Yeah, you got so the drummer. You got the drummer. Yeah, right? we found yeah, right. we yeah, found right. the uh, yeah, the right. genre yeah, right. after we after we named the band. But sometimes that's the most beautiful thing for those that like to say, "Hey, I, you know, I was at that when it started." Really seriously, you know, yeah. that, that, I, that's a wonderful thing. It's an opportunity for the health element of it from the beautiful story and i absolutely love that title i'm going to change that around so i don't get sued for plagiarism i'm going to i'm going to, I'm going to borrow that one no but i love that. i love that one yeah so as we segue out and not to hurry you by any means what else do we need to know about yourself that encompasses everybody getting a better flavor for, of where you're at if they don't know anything about you if that question makes any sense yeah you know i mean we you know, my life is basically about coaching. It's about coaching athletes. And it's about being coached as an athlete. It's about expanding these two programs, the scuba coaching program and the Institute of Purpose. Um, I have a big connection to the Parkinson's community in San Diego. I do a lot of work with that organization and, uh, and help tremendously in the, uh, in the world of Parkinson's. And, um, 
yeah, I just, it's, my life is fun. I just have fun. Real quickly on that point about Parkinson's, when yeah. folks get to your website, do, 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 is that type of a thing listed or you're supporting them, you know, be, or what should they do to jump on board for Parkinson's if they need to go direct? It's such a great cause. So I, I work with a company called the um, Parkinson's Association of San Diego. So and it's parkinsonsassociation.org. So if you, you do go. need resources, um, certainly you can jump on there or, such a great or just call. contact me contact me through the website and I can help guide you to it. But we're a local organization and try to keep it local, but um, certainly can help people um, find local organizations in their towns to, uh, to guide them for information on Parkinson's. Excellent. And most assuredly, you have an open invite to come back anytime. It's definitely an ongoing saga. And I love, I love those types of things. I want to be a part of it, however small or whatever we can do for you. <laughs> Please do keep us in the loop. And as we said in the green room, I'm working on a, several things myself with a little bit more interactive surveys and polls and my message boards at my shows. And just because, because I'm going to ask you to segue into this in a moment, just because of the way the world is right now, a little hectic and a lot of theater and all that kind of stuff. A world traveler like yourself may, may be more qualified and quantified than anybody at this juncture. What, what's your thoughts on, you know, the precipice that we're at right now that can be so beautiful and so enlightening and so rejuvenating that I like to think will happen. But those that might be festering with it a little bit, what would you say? What would you say for words of encouragement, especially with all your world travel, seeing so much of it up close and perfect per decades ago during your brilliant career, if you will. I think you have a little bit more flavor up close and personal to, to say something about something like that, if I'm making any sense. Yeah. You know, I, I just think we've lost patience. We I have. think that's what's happened because I read a book a long time ago on the history of time. Right. And I've got to find this book again. I don't have it. I don't own it. Somebody lent it to me, but it was fascinating. And it talks about how time has sped up from the idea of, you know, if you wanted to travel a hundred miles, you had to walk. And right. maybe, maybe get killed along the way. And now, and then, you know, have it transferred through telephone and fax machine. And we're almost available know. too much information too fast. And, too, and too this is the thing is that we move so fast now that patience has disintegrated. Agreed. And, and it's disintegrating in every generation. I was in Barcelona recently and we were riding our bikes around town just to go explore a little bit. And it was terrifying because everybody was walking around in their phones. Isn't Kids, adults, Isn't it frightening? old people, young people, Isn't it blue, green, red, everybody. And Isn't it's it like, it was dangerous. <laughs> you know, yeah, nobody's no, no, paying attention. For sure. You might have ran over them or they'd bang into you. They're that right. oblivious. They're that exactly. oblivious. Exactly. So, you know, I look at this and I say, look, just get a little bit more into the moment. Just be a little more patient with the world around you. Everything can wait until tomorrow. Exactly. You know, we don't have to function in fire drills every single day. I love it. And I think that's perfect. And one quick thing that popped into my mind in this so many events, you might not know this one. I saw one on television, a bike race somewhere. Some non-thinking fan. Did the, you saw you saw that one right? Took the selfie yes. and knocked that. But I mean, try to yeah. try not. That's just that's might be a perfect case. Don't don't pay attention. Pay attention. Everybody. Pay attention. Yeah, yeah pay have attention. some patience. Pay, pay, pay attention. attention. Yeah. So I'm going to sign off to you. anything that you you feel as though we should squeeze in before we leave. For no, day? I'm grateful to be here and and certainly a you know. You have in an a open year and a half when I get you this record. You have an open invite because I, I definitely want to be in the loop of this thing. I, I see great things with what you're doing, and I definitely want to be in that loop. I definitely yeah, want to no, it'd be fun. And then, you know, for sure, anybody, you know, interested. We'll see what we can do behind the scenes. Like I say, in the crazy world, it takes a little bit. If we can get some fodder going or something like that, be it would be real kooky to have some open questions and answers type of thing on something like this. I yeah. think that would be a lot. I think that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, well, okay. well. Let's Audience, everybody on the I'm website. Gonna say, I'm going to say bye bye for now, and may God bless. And good Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. And we're 
Jeff is such a baby at age 68. I'm feeling really good at 69 that I will be right here waiting for you tomorrow. Bye-bye bye, bye for now and may God bless. And just continue to pay it forward. That's the important message. We do all of this together because it takes a team. It takes a big team. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye for now and may God bless. That was awesome.